Another bit of detailing that gets added to the tank at this point is that of the track maintenance and removal cable. The Tiger One is very distinctive in having a thin gauge cable which is mounted on the driver's hand side in which this cable is used for installing as well as maintaining the tracks. When the cable is not in use it is stowed on the side. The way it is stowed on the early production Tiger is different from that of the designs found on the mid and later production units. Now the it's important to point out that on the Armor Tech kit, the early batch one that this vehicle is, the cable design that is supplied with the kit is that of a mid-production Tiger. The reason for this is, of course, this is this design here is a carryover from when Armor Tech first released their first Tiger One kit, and that kit, of course, was a mid-production unit. As for the actual components that are supplied with the Armor Tech kit to mount on the cable, they are very basic in concept. They are basic laser cut and bent steel straps, which get fastened to the side of the model via fasteners. The assembly, even though it is simplistic in detailing, is however very robust and does do an adequate job in keeping the cable firmly in place and you don't have to worry about it snapping and popping off on you during operation. However, rather than utilizing or trying to recycle that system, I went ahead and fabricated brand new mounts that you see here. The mounts you see here are all fabricated out of brass. They comprise out of brass strip and small brass fasteners. The brass fasteners are all soldered directly to the strap and will be mounted to the vehicle with that of nuts on the inside. With this fabrication technique, the pieces are nice and firmly mounted in place and will hold up not only to the wear of RCUs, but also with the tension of the track cable itself and should do an adequate job at keeping everything in place. As for the main locations where the eyes of the, of the cable get mounted, this is facilitated with this design here. It utilizes a brass strip for that of the main strap a fastener and for the actual cog or mount itself this is comprised out of a modified spent 22 caliber shell casing the shell casing was trimmed and then soldered directly to the base a small drop of solder was added on top to cover up where the the shell casings was hit when it was fired from the firearm as well as any maker mark which is found typically on the head stamp on these rounds it's an identical version for the other opposite length of cable. Now the reason why I use the Spen 22 shell casings as the mounts on the real Tiger one literally look identical like this and I have used this technique on many other German builds in one six scale in the past from King Tigers as well as to other versions of the Tiger one. Now not shown on this table are a few other small little brackets. Those components are made of resin and will be added and shown on the model once everything is all fabricated and installed to the vehicle. Now here's the side of the model just prior to the installation of the tow cable mounts. Now other things to point out that has been done to the side was that if we notice that the fastener locations that were used to mount on the magnets as well as the original kit locations to mount on the steel roof straps have been thoroughly deleted and polished away. In addition to those fastener locations being deleted, the fastener locations which were located on the back here which are for the support column which holds up the fan compartment columns have also been thoroughly polished away and deleted. This is a mirror image on the opposite side. In addition to the deletion of those fasteners, you can also see I went ahead and added the detailing for that of the side skirt mounting bosses. Now, just like with the exhaust heat shields, the fenders and the side skirts that are found on the Tiger One are not just simply fastened to the tank flush. On the real tank, these are standing off from the tank surface due to these mounting blocks. On the real tank, the blocks themselves were pieces of square steel which were drilled and tapped and then welded to the side of the tank, thus giving you the location to bolt on the components. On the very early releases of the Armor Tech kits, these mounting bosses are not included with the kit and need to be fabricated by the end user. If you try to go ahead and mount the side skirt panel 
to the tank without the bosses due to the accurate shape of the fender you will have this type of a situation happen in which the fender when you fully bolt it on will simply slide downward to the model which obviously is less than ideal with the fender bosses added when it comes time to bolt on the component as you can see it rests against the bosses in an appropriate manner and has the correct shape to them now it is also important and key to point out that these details that you see here are not included with only the very early releases of the Armor Tech kit. Since these kits were released, Armor Tech has redesigned the Tiger One kit and now feature these components. And the components that they feature are actually very nice. They are all comprised out of CNC steel square stock, which are CNC in the way that the, you just simply slide them into the tank's hull. And the components, just like on the real tank, are pre-threaded. So once the bosses are fastened to the tank with a very strong epoxy or glue, the fenders and the side skirts simply just get bolted to the, to the sides of the tank, just like on the real tank. On this version here, rather than having the pieces threaded, a fastener gets located into the component, and then on the opposite end, you have to have a retention nut. This is why on these earlier builds, it is crucial to have these sections done before you go ahead and mount on the top deck as getting access to the fasteners in order to hold everything on is very problematic specifically while the machinery on the inside. As for the bosses themselves they are fabricated out of plastruck square tubing which were all cut to the same size on a miter saw thus leaving for a very uniform appearance. As for the way they're mounted they're simply just super glued directly to the side of the tank with CA. Now, before anyone wonders how strong of a bond that will be, keep in mind that the super glue really is not what's going to be holding these components to the tank, as this is just a temporary bond in order just to get the fender affixed to the model. Once the fenders get bolted to the tank, just like with the heat shields, the boss is going to be sandwiched between the steel of the fender and the side wall of the tank. Moving from the bosses, the next bit of detailing that needs to be added will be the track cable bosses which were discussed in an earlier scene. Now before I could go ahead and add them, as you can see first I went ahead and did the layout of the components with that in pencil where everything has been mapped out. Also at this point here you can see several holes that are currently in the process of being plugged up and deleted with the bodywork. These holes that you see here are the original locations for the track mounting cable clips that were supplied with the kit. As you can see, the design for the early one differs greatly from the later production units, and so these locations need to be thoroughly wiped out prior to the installation of the new components. With the bosses out of the way, it's now time to focus on the tank side skirts. Now, what I have here are the kit original side skirts and what's a unique treat is that they are still in their original packaging from when the kit was first released. This is a very interesting thing to put on video as finding a kit in this condition with the parts still in the envelope is quite a rare thing, specifically with a kit being as old as this kit here. Removing the parts from the padded envelope reveals the actual side screw components. Now, just like a few of the other components, namely that of the front fenders, the side skirts on the this version of the Armor Tech kit are basically identical to the ones on the current versions. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they are interchangeable, as this is a, one of those other pieces that Armor Tech pretty much got right on the first try. The side skirts consist of two different lengths of pre-bent, pre-cut sheet steel pieces. As for the skirt panels themselves, you can see they have all their intricate bends into them, as well as their mounting fastener locations holes present. This is both true for the long sections and the short sections. Now, also included with the kit side skirts are the end pieces. Now if you notice there are only four components as on the real Tiger one, the only components which get the end pieces are the first two and the last two 
of the side skirt panels. The sections in the center do not have these end pieces and they are specific per the tank. As for the corner pieces, they are single pieces of laser cut sheet steel, which are pre-bent and sized to the Armor Tech piece. As you see, they can they fit absolutely perfectly. Now, also as you notice, there's no way to mount these components without a fasteners and these pieces here need to be mounted on either with another source. The kit instructions recommend a type of epoxy, however, for this application here, I doubt very much epoxy is a good use. For mounting on these components, uh, the way I do it on my builds is that I like to use solder, which was seen on the other fender components that I showed earlier. Being this type of material, I believe you can also, if you are good enough and you have the, the tooling, you can also use a TIG welder to go ahead and spot weld the components in place. However, like I said before, for this build here, I'll be utilizing the soldering technique. And here are the side skirt panels, now fully modded and are ready for their coat of primer and later installation. The panels themselves, the mods that went into them were as follows. You can see along the top edge here, I added little notches that are directly above the fastener location holes. These are found on the real Tiger One. And these little notches here are added to all of the panels. Now, in addition to the notches, Another bit of detailing that was added was actually towards the interior portion of the side screw panel. Each one of these panels feature three of these rigidity bulkheads, which are found in the three locations that I have here. Each one of these components have been scratch built. They're made out of thin sheet metal and have been attached to the side skirt panel with that of solder. The solder gives a nice strong bond and does replicate the welds, which were found on the original pieces. Now they were really two types of side skirt designs for the Tiger One. The first side skirt design differed from this one in that it did not feature the rigidity bulkheads that we have here and actually had a different style of bend to the sheet metal. These are the versions which would have been found in North Africa, which were some of the first variants to receive the actual side skirt panels as we know from my initial production Tiger One video that the side skirts were a design that came shortly after the actual adaptation of the Tiger One. The side skirts that you see here would have been present on all the Tiger Ones from the early period all the way up to the end of the Tiger One's production life. Now the side skirt panels themselves are actually, there's four different configurations for them sitting on this table right here. The two that are found towards the center of the tank are the, this type of format where you have three of the same type of rigidity bulkheads. However, the two found on the front are different. If we notice, the ones on the front feature two of the thinner rigidity bulkheads. However, the one on the very front features this longer cutoff piece. The point of this is that this is the fender side skirt panel that actually is at the very front of the tank. And what this does, this prevents any type of debris to enter inside this section over here, which is why it has more sheet metal present than on the rest of the bulkheads. This piece here was found with the kit supply parts and was mentioned in a previous scene. And as you can see from the installation, just like with the thinner strips, have been soldered directly to the piece, which leads for a nice little weld bead and gives you a lot of strength. The difference between the right and the left is that they are mere images of each other and they are not the same. In addition to the center the front center portions and the very front tip portions, you also have the same type of configuration with the rear portions. Starting with the middle sections of the vehicle, just like with the front halves, there's three smaller bulkheads. The only difference between the center rear and the center front is the length. If we notice, the ones in the rear are longer compared to the versions found on the front. And just like with the ones in the front, the very two rear side skirt panels have the larger bulkhead, which again seals off the side skirt fender from the inside. And yet it still has the other bulkhead panels present. 
These pieces now will all be heading directly into a primer, which is important as due to the way the pieces were soldered on, if they're not immediately sent off into primer, you're going to have some surface rust to contend with to, that needs to be sanded away in order for the primer and paint procedure to continue. And here's the hull side now ready for the installation of the side skirts. As you can see since the previous scenes, the entire side of the hull has added its coat of primers and as well as its base coat. In addition to the base coat, what was also added is that of some weathering for the underside portions of the side skirts. Just like with the under hull as well as even the rear hull with the exhaust manifold system, once these side skirts get added to the tank, it's going to be impossible to thoroughly get paint as well as weathering into these locations here. Now, just like with the other components, not only was the weathering added to the tank, but it's also added to the underside of the side skirt panels themselves. All the side skirt panels, as well as the opposite side of the vehicle, feature the exact same type of weathering and painting procedure that you see here. It's at this point now that I could bolt on the side skirt panel. And here's the hull now with the first two panels installed. As for the installation, it's a very smooth install it, as all the fasteners line up properly. And like I mentioned before, the on these older kits, the fasteners are held on to the inside with that of a nut, which you can see here. Of course, Loctite is used to prevent the fasteners from getting loose and rattling out while the tank is in operation. Here you can see the underside of the side skirts with the bulkheads and the weathering. As you can see, trying to get access to these locations here with paint and weathering is very difficult once fully installed, which is why I went ahead and pre-applied the weathering and the paint before installation. You can also see how the rigidity bulkheads are designed to fit flush against the hull to give more added support to the side skirt fender. And here's the model now with all of its side skirts paneling added. As you can see with the way the pieces are mounted to the model, it's a very strong and sturdy installation and should be problem free for the life of the model. Also now it's fully on, you can see the little cutouts for the mounting bosses and it's found throughout the entire length of the side skirt paneling. Moving on from the side skirt takes us to the cable clamps which were mentioned in a previous scene. Here you can see them all mounted to the model. In addition to the metal clamps which were mentioned earlier, here go the resin clamps which were also added to the model. These clamps here are fully functional and they're made of resin. As for the actual pieces themselves, they are modified from both the German and US clamps that I have listed on the ECA product line. The pieces are fully functional and are mounted to the tank via a center fastener which is bolted to the inside which gives a lot more strength to the piece as opposed to just simply gluing it to the side of the hull. Keep in mind these components have to hold up with the stress of a thin little cable so more of the strength is required. Small little fasteners will be added on these components which are the actual clamping mechanism and these will be added further down the road of the build. Now in addition to the components being fitted to the tank, you'll see that every one of these pieces have sculpted weld beads which were added. Sculpted weld beads are for both detail purposes as well as a little bit of structural strength as well. Moving from the cable takes us to the front little bosses here which are found on the front of the hull right above the fender. The bosses that you see here are made for, on the real tank, the mounting of a small little crane which helps with the removal of the sprocket. Now the original Tiger 1 did not have this little boss here instead it just had a hole which was present in the armor plate. This was deemed to be a weak point and an area for crackage so a built up tube was added and then welded in place. These are found on all the Tiger 1s from the early all the way up to the final production batches. 
As for the piece on this model here, this piece here is fabricated out of a small piece of PVC and had some sculpted weld beads added. The Armor Tech kit does have this whole pre drilled into the armor plate, which is a nice touch. And the kit does actually supply you with the detail for this purpose here. Here goes the kit original unit. It's made of one piece of CNC'd steel and simply gets plugged into this hole. Now, the reason why I did not use the kit supply component is, as you can see, it is solid and is not hollow, while the real unit would be through and through all the way through the armor plate which is why the stock kit ones were not utilized and the PVC was used in its place. Now, as on the later production versions with the Armor Tech kits, as you know, Armor Tech does modify and improve the detailing on their kits compared to this original release, I'm not sure what their kits have added, if they changed this or not, but we'll find out with the other Armor Tech Tiger 1 build that I do have going. Now with all of these features and details out of the way, I c the next step on the build is to focus on the top deck and the top deck detailing. More information on that is to follow in the next upcoming video. And with that, that concludes this project update video for this 1.6 scale radio controlled German early production Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.